Thank you, Mr. Maddie. Thank you for stopping me from buying this game. Thank you for putting this out day one. I know it takes a lot of work to get this stuff out and you had to grind 12 hours. Thank you because you are saving a lot of people. Let's take a look at his video. Let's take a look at it. everybody. It is Maddie here today and some videos are just therapeutic. This is one of them. As a diehard Star Wars fan, I was very excited for Star Wars Outlaws, but this game, I don't dude, know. Dude, I, I wasn't, dude. I knew right away it was bad. We had all the red flags, horrible character design. Just compare that to Bastila from KOTOR. Just, just horrible all around. The effects are horrible. The graphics are horrible. There were all the red flags. I was not, I, unlike him, I was not excited for this game at all. This look, game looked terrible. So mad because I play games like Star Wars Jedi Survivor amidst all of the crap going on with Star Wars. Like I got five episodes deep into the Acolyte and tapped out. I play this game and I'm like, I get why people hate Star Wars, but I look at something like Jedi Survivor and go, yeah, that's the good stuff. I love KOTOR. That's the good stuff. Like when Star that's Wars the good is stuff. on point, there's nothing better to me. I love Star Wars unapologetically. So when it was announced that Ubisoft Massive, the developers behind the Division games, would be working on an open world Star Wars game, I was excited because to me, at the bare minimum, them. I wasn't, dude. I wasn't excited at all. I could see the warning signs. I could see that the hit cities were hollow. I just knew this was going in a bad direction. And he's right, though. We have things like Assassin's Creed and Far Cry. And the worst case scenario for this game would have been, hey, you know, it, it's going to be repetitive and boring, but it doesn't matter. It's Star Wars. If the game plays fluid, we won't care. Like he's saying, if it's a Star Wars game and it's fluid, we don't care. It's Star Wars game. As long as I have a blaster, I, I can have maybe a lightsaber, but in this, you don't really, you're not going to really get that. A pole arm or something, a sword. They did in Kotor. If you, as long as you have cool weapons, cool things, you're shooting stormtroopers, you're doing bounty missions for, you know, the huts, you're doing Star Wars stuff, no one's going to care. It could be as generic and boring as you want. If you're doing Star Wars stuff, Star Wars stuff always looks good. Star Wars stuff always looks good, man. And that's what he's talking about. I get an acceptable Ubisoft templated open world, and that was perfectly fine with me because I just like to exist in yep. this universe. Well, I didn't really even get that. I have a lot to say about this one, but I'm frustrated as a passionate fan of the Star Wars franchise. I'm going to come across probably more harsh than other reviewers, but this game from a design level with its choices on gameplay, particularly the stealth aspect of the gameplay, just bugged me so much. The That looks horrible, man. That looks so bad. Is so bad. From Look how bad this AI bugs. is. This game is all over the place. And during the final mission, like my quest froze twice and I had to quit to the dashboard and redo massive parts Bug of the game. This happened over Bugs I can forgive because let's be honest, I played Bethesda games, bugs are okay. I can, I can forgive the, I can forgive the bugs. What I can't forgive is how bad everything else is in this game, man. Over. And last but certainly not least, a lot of mechanics for the game that I was hoping were going to deliver and elevate the experience, like the reputation system or space exploration, things I'm really excited about. Dude, for reputation, you know, Mass Effect did a decent job, but copy New Vegas. We sound like a broken record with Fallout New Vegas fans. Copy Fallout New Vegas. They did reputation the best. And also Elder Scrolls, like two Daggerfall did reputation really well. This reputation sh system is terrible, like he's saying. Not deliver for me personally at all. So I have a lot to say, ladies and gentlemen. Shout out to Ubisoft for the review code. If you're new here and you're into day one reviews, you're in the right place. Consider subscribing. Let's start off at the top with what I think is one of the most vicious gameplay cycles I've gone through. This was a long 20 plus hour adventure for me, y'all. And that's including side content being the main story. I feel bad, Mr. Maddie, that you had to go through this game for 20 hours, but you are saving a lot of people. Here is he makes some good points. Most of the game, they force you to do stealth. I hate that. I hate when you have no gameplay options and you have to do stealth. Dude, I don't want to do stealth in a Star Wars game, man. This isn't uh, Metal Gear, Gear Solid. This isn't Thief. This isn't uh, Dishonored. This is none of those things. This is Star Wars, man. We're supposed to be shooting things.
does not let up at all. So here is your gameplay flow in Star Wars Outlaws. They're going to send you somewhere where you have to be quiet. It'll tell you in your objectives, don't get caught. And they're serious about that because if you get caught, you get sent back to a checkpoint. If the alarm goes off, you get sent back to a checkpoint. I'm talking like early 2000s level gameplay design. Like you get caught, that's it. You're going back. And many times you'll get sent this is the worst thing for me that that uh that 2000s that nintendo 64 level design it reminds oh oh ooh, i got it i got it you remember mission impossible for nintendo 64 yes that's this dude mission impossible for nintendo 64 if you got caught your mission was failed your mission was failed ethan you got to boot back up you got to go back to the beginning that was the worst thing about that game and I believe there were some in James Bond. Did Goldeneye have that? Let me know in the comments if Goldeneye had that too. But he's right. This is an old level design. This is an old type of thing where you get caught and you have to get reset. That's probably the most frustrating thing about this game. And I'm so glad I didn't buy it because I want to blast around with lasers. I want to be able to have that gameplay. And you know, you play Far Cry, you've played Assassin's Creed. It's very, you can do a lot of stealth in those games. But you also have the ability to throw down, right? You can really throw down in those games. Very far back and having to redo the same missions over and over and over was annoying. Now, this would be fine if the game was built for stealth gameplay. You'd think with it being such a prevalent feature that this would be a primary stealth game. All you have really at your disposal, though, is a takedown that's only done when you're really close to that looks so bad. It's and also like she's just knocking out, you know, men with two punches. I, I'm so sick of seeing that crap. The enemy, a stun shot, a single stun shot, might I add, that <laughs> takes a long time to recharge, like upwards of a minute. And then you can use Nyx, your little pet, to attack enemies or distract. This is so bad. The gameplay is so bad, it's especially the blaster. He's going to get into that, that in a second, but the blaster. A but again, these are all single takedowns. The idea here clearly is that K Vest is a scoundrel. She's not a soldier. We're not going to equip her with much, but this girl's missing every tool and gadget required to make this a competent stealth experience. What I'm talking about is not optional. So it's not even like, oh, Maddie, just go guns blazing, dude. Who cares if the stealth sucks then? You can't. Okay, so I have to play stealth. And I just want to point out too that if they use the inspiration for other games, Look at SWOTOR, look at KOTOR. If you're a scoundrel, you could be a smuggler scoundrel in uh, SWOTOR, right? The MMO. And you have all kinds of abilities. You have a healing ability. You have the droid with you. You have, you know, special shots with your blaster. You have a blaster that works. Smugglers don't always have to have stealth, right? She could have had stealth abilities. Like, I would say they could have used Far Cry, dude. I would have used, I would have, what I would have done is I would have looked at SWOTOR. And I would have looked at Far Cry and I would have looked at, yeah, I would have looked at Starfield and I would have kind of combined them together and you have Jedi Survivor, Jedi Survivor, you should have take inspiration. Those should be on your artboard. This is just, this is just something else. And none of the mechanics support it properly because they're all bad. And, this oh, is and uh, just you, you just have to point out real quick how bad the graphics are. And people <laughs> complain about Starfield. They thought this game was going to be better than Starfield. Uh, Starfield's a great story. game. Even in the side content, I this played, is crap. sometimes they're like, hey, you want to go get this vault? Uh, okay, you have to stealth back into this. Same takedown. She's punching people in helmets, right? You ever punch, try to punch a mitre? Try to punch a motorcycle helmet. Tell me how tell me how that works. Section out. owned by the Pike Syndicate. And if you get caught, you get sent all the way back. It totally devalues the actual content in the game <laughs> because none of it is appealing since I Dude, they even send you back in the side content. I know I'm gonna get checkpointed 40 times before I get to just one place I want to get to. And in some cases, it's not worth it. Like I got to that vault I'm talking about. Oh, I need to find key cards, so I have to go around the world, find key cards, and then stealth back in again. Yeah, it's just so frustrating. And even when the guns fly, I think the game doesn't let you play it properly. What you're equipped with is Kay's moddable blaster pistol. Yeah, this is probably the biggest mistake is because we want to blaster gameplay. And I even compared this game to Shadows of the Empire. This game can't even match up to the fun gameplay of Shadows of the Empire. And that was a Nintendo 64 game. So she has three different shot types. You have plasma, 
Ion and Charge, each doing different things with the environment and on enemies. A Charge Shot is much more radial, targeting multiple enemies at once. Your Ion is good for droids as well as activating machinery in the world. And then your Plasma is like your standard damage. And you can change that for like a single shot or a rapid shot. And that's really it. Otherwise, you have weapon pickups. Think of these like power weapons in something like Gears or Halo, your E-11s, your snipers, and so on and so forth. That's how you get the strongest weapons, but they're extremely limited on ammunition. And again, I know where your head's going. Well, Maddie, if the pistol sucks, then why don't you just rock with these weapons? Anytime you press the right thumbstick to interact with anything, you drop it right away. You go to slide between a wall to load in the next level, you drop your weapon. So you're always- Dude, look how bad that looks. The, the speeders, the speeders, everything, they're just popping up. It's like, how do you have that many speeders? You go to slide between a wall to load in the next level. You drop your... Look how horrible that AI is. They just group together in speeders. And you can see what I'm talking about with the guns. It, the gun gameplay had to be priority. Oh, man. If you're making a Star Wars game, you're making a smuggler. Blaster gameplay should be a priority. Blaster gameplay. Let's look, take a look at one more big thing. Is going to be the space exploration because he basically nails it and his space exploration, and it's it's it, he says it perfectly. Let's take a look at this, and it will give our content final. you'll find in space is just gathering treasure in the nebula. So you'll be just like flying around, use your scanner, loot like three chests, just floating out in space, and move on. That's your space exploration. Mass Effect, I never took you for granted, but I promise for sure I never will. Because it feels like between Starfield and Star Wars Outlaws, I am so wounded and cannot comprehend how we have not gotten a great space exploration experience. Dude, these graphics look so bad. They look like, um, you remember those arcade, the TIE Fighter arcade games that they used to have at the arcade? It, it looks that bad. Like I said, the special effects in this game look horrible. They look like they are from the 2000s. They look like they could have been done in After Effects. They look awful. Now, I do disagree with him on one thing. I like the Starfield space exploration. I think they just need to, you know, implement like that mod where you can go faster and kind of have seamless transitions around uh, the moons, right? Maybe just the moons, maybe not the whole thing. But if they could figure out a way in Starfield to load the moons, where you can have a, you know, a seamless transition between the moons that would make a, you know, a big difference. And if they could make it to where you jump to a planet and then you could fly down where if they could, they could update the system, that would be great. That would fix all of the problems in Starfield that people have for the most part, that would fix most of them. I don't know if Bethesda can, but hopefully they can rewrite some of the code. We saw them add the vehicle. We see them, they, they're developing the custom content for the Shattered Space. So it is possible, hopefully we could get some seamless transition for the most part. And what I mean by that is you load one area, right? And then you load the other, but then you do get seamless transition. And we know they're adding more space encounters, but the space encounters in Starfield are really fun. And they have space stations with zero gravity. They have space stations, you know, like the, the faction quest line with the Crimson Fleet, where you have to get the money the, the, you know, the, um, the ship that that's stuck in that, uh, plasma stick, the, the nebula. And there's a lot of cool stuff in Starfield. There's a, there are space stations. Uh, he's not giving enough credit to Starfield. Disagree there. Mr. Maddie disagree it's so long, but it upsets me greatly because this was one of the things I was most excited about. This Terrible is the thing graphics. I kind of dreamt of. Like when I thought of open world star Wars, it's like, yes, like getting off the planet and then being able to see this big open space and landing on derelict spaceships and trying to figure out what happened there. Like, it's almost like too good to be true if that actually did happen. So I'm left feeling just so robbed of what could have been an absolutely great experience in exchange for literally just grabbing materials. That's all there is, man. It's, oh my God. Also not it is the character models and facial animations. I'm gonna let the game speak for itself once more. Take a look. Yeah, he wouldn't, but he told me you could mod my speeder. Uh, yeah. Yeah, of course. I've got every part you could want. I mean, mag fins, aftermarket sensors, booster coils. How about a hydro repulsor? Wow. Oh. Uh, no. You just said every part I could want. So you saw that, you heard that. We can all be thankful for Mr. Matty Plays for saving us from playing and buying this horrible, horrible game 
with that day one review. And as you can see, any aspect of an RPG you could think about, any aspect, think about it, that game does it the worst I've ever seen. The worst. And people were complaining <laughs> about Starfield facial animations, which are mostly fixed. And basically, those facial animations remind you of Mass Effect Andromeda. But they're worse. They're worse than that. And the dialogue is worse than Sword Tour. And Sword Tour is an MMO. And Sword Tour has better story elements and better dialogue than a, than a dedicated single-player game. How is that possible? And if you don't know, Sword Tour has some pretty generic stuff. It's an MMO, but it does, it does the story stuff pretty good. That's kind of ridiculous. So that's it. That's my reaction to Mr. Matty Plays. Thank you, Mr. Matty, for saving us from that horrible game. The whole thing is horrible, right? And this is just another death blow to Star Wars. Thank God we got the Jedi Survivor series because, man, this is terrible. I don't know what developer we could get that could bring Star Wars back or do an open world Star Wars game. I, I mean, honestly, at this point, I think... I think Obsidian could do KOTOR if they get the rights to KOTOR. Microsoft, yeah, yeah. Microsoft should buy the rights to KOTOR, give it to Obsidian. I know they have a lot on their plate or in Exile or any of their studios. Microsoft should buy KOTOR. They should buy the KOTOR rights because we know that Sony gave that up. I think that's the only thing that's going to save Star Wars gaming. I think that's the only thing that's going to save Star Wars gaming is if Microsoft gets KOTOR, they, they give it to Obsidian, Bethesda, and Exile, any, any one of their other developers. Hell, even 343 or any of those people. But the problem is going to be the development time. So even if they bought KOTOR, it probably would take like three years for it to come out. That's the video. Those are my thoughts. RIP Star Wars. Very sad. Very sad that this game released in the state that it did, and it wasn't even as good as a generic Assassin's Creed or Far Cry game. And our only hope at redemption at this point is, you know, well, Sword Tour is still going. That's pretty good. Uh, Jedi Survivor could have another series. And if Microsoft gets KOTOR and, and uh, does something with KOTOR, because that's the only thing that is going to save this franchise.